Hey, Rick. Hey, Lisa. Got something on your mind today? I do. I want to explore the differences between checking in versus checking up and how confusion with these two phrases can lead to a lot of broken trust. Ooh, such a lovely topic. Go on, please. Well, before we really dive in, I think it's worth defining the difference between these two terms. I think of checking up, it's often about you and your feelings and needs. It's very me-centric. Whereas checking in is showing care for the other person and being genuinely curious about their feelings and needs. It's all about them. Defining with clarity. I love it. So when we get those emails from a client or boss asking about their deadline in the guise of how we're doing, right? They may say, oh, we're just checking in. How's the project going? Those are actually, in fact, checking up, correct? Bingo. Even though they're using the words just checking in, are they really checking in? Sometimes, perhaps. But I'd wager a lot of the times their real reason for reaching out is out of interest or concern in the status of the work, not the person they're apparently checking in on. And that's okay and certainly needed sometimes, but we're seldom clear that that's what we're doing. We often say, as you pointed out, we're checking in, we're really checking up on a project status or even on our teammates. And the focus of this is to satisfy the person doing the checking, right? It's to alleviate their concern. While a potentially well-meaning action, this checking up on people can lead to eroded trust when we're not clear about what our intent is. Well, sometimes I doubt that it's well-meaning, but let's focus on people who truly are and have good intentions. And so I imagine that a lot of people, and I know this is the case when I started my first business, is that they probably heard that checking in on people is a good way to show your team that you care about them, right? It's like you read about that in management books of like making sure you're constantly giving feedback, stuff like that. And so I think people, like you said, really do have good intentions. And so why do you think that this thing intended to build trust ends up backfiring and breaching trust in so many cases? Good question. And I agree with you that checking in is an important thing, but I think it's really in the details here. Truly checking in shows that you care about your team member, but so often we put off checking in until we need something else from the person. We pair things like, hey, how are you doing with, and by the way, do you need anything from me regarding project X or how is project Y coming along? To make the other party feel like you truly care and are truly just checking in and not checking up, I think it's really important to separate the two. And I think this really goes back to some of the facets of trust, specifically clarity, consistency, and caring. Are you clear with your intent and are you being consistent in showing that you care about the other person? Or are you only checking in when it's convenient for you or you want something? Oh, I love that point. And I feel like maybe a non-work metaphor, a context outside of work, I think it's kind of like if a stranger told you that your outfit looked really snazzy and then immediately afterwards asked you if you want to buy a used car, right? Because that secondary act makes a compliment feel just like some cheap way to try and convince you to do what they want you to do. And it just makes you totally question the validity of the compliment. Yeah. And that just feels slimy. Your intent becomes unclear when you're putting too many things in a single phrase or even an email or a meeting especially when you're specifically trying to build trust and rapport with people, even if you have all the best intent behind it. If people interpret your actions as inauthentic or manipulative, you're not going to be building trust. So true. I mean, going back to clarity as a first facet of trust, this really makes a lot of sense. And I know that checking up on people or a project definitely has its place as well. But I I would imagine that most people listening today probably want to know how to be better at checking in. And so given that people can so easily botch this, what are some concrete ways that they can make sure that they're truly checking in on people and not checking up? Love how you're bringing this back to the practical. Well, I think the first step is to be clear with yourself about what you're trying to do, your intent, whether it's checking in or checking up. From there, make sure that if your intent is to check in, you're very clearly doing so and showing that you care. You're not merely couching your check-in with a lot of other work-related business. This isn't groundbreaking, but you can even explicitly call it checking up to more readily and clearly communicate your intent, if that's what it is. And beyond that, it's then making sure that whoever you're checking in with feels like you see and hear them. This can be another tripping hazard. 
for example, a leader might send an email or direct message asking how someone is doing, but when that person responds, there's crickets. Or they might have a check-in meeting with someone where the leader is doing all the talking and very little listening. Uh, that's so frustrating. Uh, like one of the people I coach was telling me a story about how a recruiter reached out and was all like, hey, love your work on X. We'd love to connect and chat about what you're up to. And so my client responded, offering some times to grab a Zoom call. And then that silence, totally ghosted. Ugh. Yeah, I know, right? It's super frustrating. And it was so obvious that the recruiter only wanted to talk about a potential role. And whether it got filled or something or whatever, it made my client feel like now they weren't worth their time. The recruiter didn't care about building a relationship. And we were talking earlier about sending clear messages. And in this case, the, the message of the recruiter not giving a damn really came through loud and clear. So I think missing the mark with checking in is so incredibly harmful. Yeah, that follow through is so important. It's That's the act of caring, right? And if the recruiter had just been upfront with what was going on, I think the emotional impact on your client would probably have been different. Just imagine what it would feel like when someone asks you how your day is, and then they'd proceed to completely ignore you and play a game on their phone. It's super disrespectful. And the message one sends is the exact opposite of what genuinely checking in is for. That's such a great point. Uh, so any other concrete tips for our listeners, or should we end this episode with a challenge? I think these are really great starting points for clarifying whether you're checking in or checking up. Um, so why don't we go right to a challenge? Go for it. I love this. All right. So here it is. We challenge you, our listeners, to reach out and check in with someone this week, whether it's a friend you haven't spoken to in a while, a colleague or team member that you just like to connect more with. Go ahead, reach out and check in. And it could be as simple as, hey, was thinking of you and just want to see how you're doing. Awesome. So- Thank you for listening to In Trust. That's it for today's episode. We shall see you again soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to the In Trust podcast. And if this resonated with you, be sure to subscribe or follow and leave us a review. We would also love for you to share with a friend because after all, trust is an infinite game and it's better together. And now a quick word from our sponsors. The move to working from home hasn't been easy for everyone, and if this is you, we have a solution. Over at Spotlight Trust, we're happy to introduce the Reimagining Remote Virtual Studio. This is the most comprehensive, people-centered program for leading a virtual work experience that builds trust, belonging, and engagement. You'll walk away from the virtual studio with practical, actionable ways to lead your people forward into a lasting, more human, remote future. Enrollment is now open, and today is the best day to sign up to secure one of the limited spots at the lowest price. The workshop starts October 25th, so go now to spotlighttrust.com slash reimagining dash remote to learn more and enroll now. That's spotlighttrust.com slash reimagining dash remote. We'll see you in the studio.